Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here welcome to my channel. Hey I'm Kayla. In today's video I'm going to be showing you a couple new pops that me and Jonathan got which he does have a lot more with him in Tennessee but here in Mississippi where I'm from. Well we're both from Mississippi but I live in Mississippi. If you've been watching for a while you know that but if you don't yeah my husband lives in Tennessee right now and I live in Mississippi but just to get right on into the video Let's check out these pops. I have three new pops that I'm going to be showing you guys, which you probably saw in the thumbnail. And that might be why you clicked on this video, or you clicked on this video because you just want to hear me talk. You know? Probably not, but it's fine. You know? Anyways, um, I'm not sure which one I want to start off with. Khaleesi's over here, so of course if you hear something, it's probably her. She's making herself at home, doing what she does. You guys kind of usually I think would know that because she's the one who farts in my videos all the time and she always likes to make little appearances and she's getting comfy right now trying to lay down on my rug. But anyways, so the first one we'll start off with is this Marvel Pop and it is a Funko Limited Edition and it is a Stonekeeper. I believe Jonathan got this one off of Macari. I think so. It's got a pop protector on it, so I hope the glare isn't too, too bad. And that is just like the little set that he came from. And that's the other side. The box came in great condition. I was going to do an unboxing of these, but then I just realized that like, even if I'm unboxing them or just showing them on a video, like you're going to see them either way, so I didn't think it really mattered that I just like unboxed them, you know what I'm saying? But that's a really cool one. Um, it's from the Infinity Wars and the Stonekeeper. I know who that is, but I cannot explain it. Um, yeah, let's just cut that. Next, let's go on to the next. Also, at the end, we will go to the Funko app and check out the pricing. And we will, you know, check out the, the pricing and do that good junk. So, the next one I want to show you guys is one of my favorites because... I love Rugrats, which again, if you saw the thumbnail, you'll know what I'm talking about. And I don't know if we have Reptar, but we got the Reptar Chase right here, which was just like kind of like a happy for me that Jonathan got me. And again, Reptar is supposed to be green, but he is purple, so that's why it's the Chase. And then he comes in this set right here. Let's see. There we go. And that's his little set right there, just them three. And again, this is also an awesome pop because I grew up watching Rugrats. And one of my little guilty pleasures growing up until like present is just watching Rugrats to like as a back noise because I've seen every single episode. The last pop I want to show you is actually a two pack. And it is a Game of Thrones pop. And it's a Books a Million exclusive, as you can see. It is Jon Snow and Bran, which, if you know anything, Bran is not on his feet anymore. But I'm actually going to talk about the last episode here in a minute. So if you have not watched it, jump off of this. Like, I'm going to probably talk about it after we do the, the pricing and stuff, just because I want to talk about it with you guys, and I want to know what you guys thought about it. And like the whole season as a whole and stuff like that. But we were going to talk about this pop real quick. I really enjoy all of the Jon Snow pops, obviously, because I love Jon Snow. And that's all I'm going to say for right now. But this is his pack right here. And of this pack back here, we have the Mountain, Tormund, Jon, Tyrion. We do not have Cersei. We do have Cersei on a throne. And then there's one one, but we have the giant white that is like a exclusive that's like blue. I don't know if he's glow in the dark, but he might be. I'm not really sure, but it's like the white walker version of a giant white, if that makes any sense. And then we have obviously Bran Stark, which is in this set right here. So we have all of these except for one one and Cersei Lannister. So that's really cool. But I'm going to jump on the Funko app. And we're going to see how much these are. So, yeah. The first one we were talking about was Stonekeeper. So, I'm just going to type in Stonekeeper 
on my app and he is going for $75 and we're just going to add him into the collection. So again, Stonekeeper right here is going, well, let's get him to focus. Let's see. There we go. Stonekeeper is going for $75. We need to get him a stacky, but I've not had a chance to go to GameStop to buy a stacky, which if you know any other places that sell them besides like online, obviously, like I know GameStop sells them, but like I don't know if any other store sell them. But if you know that, let me know down below. The second one that I showed you guys was the Rugrats Reptor Khaleesi. The this reptile right here, which is the ta the taste. Oh my gosh, is the chase. And this reptile. Let me add him real quick so I can talk about him. This reptile right here is going for twenty one dollars. Yes, twenty one dollars. And I don't. I'm not sure what the normal pop goes for. It looks like we do have Reptar. It's somewhere in our collection because I have it on here. Um, it's going for nine dollars, and then there's a Reptar eating Reptar cereal for ten, and then there's a Reptar glow going for twelve. So that's still pretty good. The next pop that I showed you guys was this Books a Million exclusive of Jon Snow and Bran, and it is going for $28 on the Funko app, which again, all of these prices are going off the Funko app. But yes, this one is going into, going into, this one is going for $28, which I'm also super excited about it because we won't all, we won't, I won't, let me rephrase this. I think Jonathan wants all of the Game of Thrones. I'm pretty positive, but I know for a fact that I want all of the Game of Thrones pops. So like, we're working on it. We're slowly but surely working on that. But okay. So here comes Major's Fuller. So again, second disclaimer, get off this video if you have watched, have not watched Game of Thrones, the last season slash last episode, because I don't want to ruin it for you guys. I do not want to ruin it for you because that's something you need to watch and interpret on your own. And then if you do watch it and you come back, you can listen to what I have to say. But again, don't be mad at me because I've now said it three disclaimers, including this one again. Get off this, please. I beg of you. I do not want to ruin it for you. But going into season eight, episode six, the beginning of the episode, if I can remember correctly, because I watched this last night, this is Monday. The video will be up tomorrow, as in today, Tuesday. But I'm filming this on a Monday. Anyways, so going into the beginning of the video, seeing like the city in ashes, I guess you could say. Um, I knew something was going to happen to Danny just because of how she was reacting. But I do want to talk about one scene, which I don't, if I find pictures, I'll like pop it up over here or something. So you know what I'm talking about. Um, the scene where she's walking out and all the Unsullied and Darth Raki are like out, you know, in the big area and like Drogon's in the back and does his little wings like that. I thought that was a beautiful episode, not episode, a beautiful scene. And like, I love that part of the episode so much and then previous to that when Tyrion was seeing that he was the only Lannister left basically kind of hurt my heart even though I don't give a dump about Cersei like I'm okay with the way she died like you know she sat in a window and drank wine like at least the building that she lived in was the building that killed her I guess you could say even though indirectly Danny killed her Anyways, getting off that subject before I get on like a tangent about something that doesn't even matter. Okay, let me put this out there as well. I love Danny. Like, I love Khaleesi. Obviously, my dog's name is Khaleesi, so I have a little bit of like, ugh, in my heart for her death scene. And I'm sorry if I just it for you, but I warned you three times, so I'm so sorry. But her death scene was not going to be a happy ending for anyone just because it's Danny. We grew up, we're not, we all, we, we grew up with all the characters. But like, for instance, like from season one to season eight, you saw this progression of like this woman being power hungry, which is fine. But I don't like how people are saying that like they ruined a character when it's been foreshadowed all throughout all eight seasons. And I think that like her becoming power hungry 
was fine because like it literally built up and foreshadowed all the times that all the times it foreshadowed all the time that eventually she was going to become a power hungry mad queen if that makes any sense which i love her so i'm fine with it i'm like you go girl you break the wheel you do that you know like i am here for it you know what i'm saying and so after that scene when john stabbed her i was just like Like, I had no reaction at first. I was just, like, literally my jaw dropped and I was just like, oh, my God. I was like, she really, she really, she really did. She's really dead. But anyways, I also read an article talking about how whenever um, Amelia Clark read her final script and it really made me, I think it made me more upset of the way that she reacted because, like, she feels as Danny's a part of her, which if I was an actress, I'd feel the same way. And anyways, like that made me more upset after I got done with the the episode. I read all of these articles about it and I was just like very shooketh. So now we're past that little, I'm basically walking through the whole entire episode. So if you don't watch it or don't have HBO or have no access, here's kind of a timeline of it. You know, like it's kind of a little timeline. So after that and of course John's being take, pr taken prisoner. Um, well, no, no, no. Let's get back to when Drogon freaking melted the Iron Throne. I thought that was a beautiful scene because they talk about it. Well, Varys and Tyrion foreshadowed that, like, dragons are, like, smart, like, smarter than humans. I could be wrong, but I believe I remember that. That foreshadowing how smart um, dragons are, but Drogon and, and Danny in like for real had like this connection that none of her other dragons had and obviously they know when their mother's upset and stuff because they can feel it but like Drogon and Khaleesi had a very powerful connection and he saw the Iron Throne as like what made her mad and what got her killed because he could have easily burnt John and just dead John done no more but yeah I thought that was a beautiful scene and I was reading things of people on Twitter talking about how like the reason Drogon missed was because he's blind. And there's a lot of misconceptions that, like, people are making. Which, obviously, they're just talking. But, like, I didn't catch that. I don't know if that's really why. But my interpretation of the scene was that it was beautiful. And that I understand the whole ordeal of, like, the dragon knows the mom and whatever. It's a very confusing thing if you've never watched it. So, if you've never watched it and you're still listening, thank you. But, getting into, let's just skip all the way to the end when basically they're like Jon Snow can't be king that is the only point in the series that I was honestly just like what the frick like he is heir to the Iron Throne he could have before that freaking told everyone but I mean Danny probably would have burned him alive which is probably a good thing he did it but I did not like all of the unanswered questions but only they're not really unanswered because then again, like, Game of Thrones started with House Stark and it ended with House Stark, which I love about that. And, um, I just have so many questions. Like, John is now, like, king of the wildlings. I want to know what the frick he's doing up there, you know? Like, I want to know what he's doing with his life. And, like, Arya is, I saw this tweet that was, like, the new Dora Explorer. And that's hilarious. And I want to know what the frick she's doing. And I'm pissed that she's not with Gendry. Am I the only one who feels that way? Like, I feel like Arya and Gendry should have been together, which I understand that Arya is, like, she, Arya is Arya. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's going to go and do her thing. Let her do her thing. That is completely fine. One second. I'm not sure where I left off, but I think I was talking about how Arya did her own thing. And if I did, I'll cut all this off. But, um, one thing that really I not enjoyed, but I realized... Or not realize freak. How do I say this? One thing from season one that you, you could see was that Sansa wanted power. And not necessarily just power. She just wanted to be... I guess you could say power. Like, she wanted to be king even though Joffrey was the worst human being probably possible to have married. She still, like, was devoted to him. And so, as you can see in season one, like, she maybe was in love with him in a sense that she thought she was in love with him but it was really I think she was in love with the thought of power and over the entire eight seasons um she really like 
has been went through a lot which all of the characters have but just talking about Sansa herself um she really went through a lot she freaking almost had to marry Joffrey until that was gone and he married the girl the Martell what is her name I can now remember her name and then she had to marry Tyrion which was just insane and not necessarily it was embarrassing but honestly Tyrion was probably the best man out of all of them which I mean we saw in one of the, one of the previous episodes that he was she was saying that he was the best of them I'm assuming not assuming but talking about the Lannisters and probably all the men she's been with and then after that freaking Littlefinger screwed her over and married her off to Ramsay and then Ramsay we all know is an even more horrible person and you know at the end just rambling up about everyone that poor Sansa had to deal with excluding Tyrion um I think she got what she wanted slash kind of deserved. I'm not a huge, like, Sansa stan, but, like, you know what I'm saying? But, anyways, that's should be said all of my questions that I had. I had lots of questions. Is thank you guys so much for watching. I know that I totally went on a tangent at the end about Game of Thrones, but I really just want to know what you guys think about the final season. I know there's lots of, like, controversy of, like, it was very rushed. It was... It was awful and like I'm not gonna agree to disagree because I honestly think there could be a lot more episodes that could have pulled this out and not necessarily been like so pulled out that it got boring but like it could have at least been 10 episodes in my opinion like they could have showed stuff that happened after an episode after Danny died and stuff like that but let me let me know down below what you guys think about this final season because it's it's done I've heard I've heard that there will be prequels of this, of talking about, like, before the Targaryens went to Westeros and, like, the Children of the Forest. So, I really hope that happens. Like, I really hope that happens. But, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my little TED Talk slash showing you some pops and stuff. But, again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!